I'd like to clarify certain things uh, so that the general public will know the difference between Kalamsi and then mining as a whole. Mining of gold or mining of any mineral is just a process of excavating or the process of extracting the mineral from the ground be it gold or diamond or any other mineral. Right? With gold, we say the process of extracting the gold or getting the gold within the land is what we call the mining. We are mining for it. That's a search for gold. Now, the method of mining determines the legality or the illegality of the whole thing. The method involved in mining or the method used by the miner is what will make his mining legal or illegal. Now, the illegal mining is what we term, we give it a general name as Galamsi. That's illegal mining. Mind you, not all mining in Ghana is illegal. There are legal miners. And then there are as well illegal miners. Now, who are the legal miners and then who are the illegal miners? Legal miners are the miners who work under a concession. You have a concession, you work under the concession, you have rules and you have methods used in mining. The method should be such that it should be environmental friendly, thereby not causing any harm or danger to the society or the environment within which your mining is going on. And the illegal miners, they have no concession, they have no mining licenses, they just invade in any land at all or any premises and then they start mining undercover. That's what we call Kalamse. Now let's come back to how the mining is done. We have mining called the alluvia mining where we have the washing plant, we have the excavator to excavate or to dig down the ground and then bring out the gravel where the good residue is found. Now we bring out the gravel and then wash it with water. So with this kind of mining you just need water. You need water and then we use in Ghana here we use the reverse match use the reverse match in doing the washing. So after the gravels have been excavated from the ground, we bring it out, out and then wash, start washing the gravel so that we get the good particles attached to the gravel or the stones. We separate the main bigger boat, the boat, the boulders from the uh, good particles that the dust. So at the end, we are going to wash the gravels for a period of time and then we are going to get the good out of it. This washing process, it's what spoils the water bodies. Because we get clean water, we use the clean water in washing the gravel, thereby making the water dirty, and then it goes back into the river, and then it turns the color of the river uh, from colorless to the milky ones you have been seeing on TV. Now, mining illegally. Some people invade into the forest, and then they start mining in the forest reserve in the forest reserve the forest which have been reserved now people are invading into their premises to mine those are the illegal miners and then those are the ones to tackle because with the legal mining before we start the mining process now let's come back to how the mining is even started in our communities what we have been seeing around manso and all these areas in the shanty region in the western region and even in the eastern region what we have been seeing on tv now before a miner can start mining you need to go into a concession and register with the concessionaire you are going to pay something you call goodwill so you cannot just enter into any community and start mining you are going to do what we call prospecting that's going to check if you have gold in the land now if there is gold in the land you use a method a simple method and then you check if there is good enough good if after doing that you are going to the owner of the land to buy the land from now you are going to see the owner of the concessionaire and most of these concessions are owned by politicians most of these concessions are owned by politicians so it's, it's these politicians who give the concession the right to you to even mine within that concession so we go to them and then we pay a goodwill say you are going to work on it maybe 
25 acres of land you are going to pay a concession a, a concession fee or a goodwill of around 80,000 Ghana cities here we will call it let me give you a local name for that money it's just a knocking fee to enter the premises and work now after that you are going to the chief of the community to go and pay your dues to the chief to announce your presence that you are a minor you are coming to mine in the community the chiefs have their percentage they take we pay to them after which we will go to the local committee you go to them and give them their percentage too now they give us the go ahead to enter the bush and then mine so why then do you come on tv to say uh, people are doing mining you are stopping galamsey you are stopping if you want to really stop galamsey who are the owners of the concessions who are the workers who are the people working for who brings the excavator to the to the site do you think those people you see on the site everyone can afford an excavator the excavators are also owned by politicians some politicians to be specific some politicians they own excavators which they give out for hiring and then we go there and then rent the excavator and then use it to work an excavator for a day in my area is 5500 so you're going to rent it for 10 days 10 nights 10 days 10 nights let's say if you are renting an excavator for 10 days you are supposed to pay around uh 55 that's for 10 days and you are going to work with it now after the concessionaire gives you the permit to work on his concession now you have the right to go and work and then there is an arrangement which will go on at the end of every week you have to pay 15 percent of all your gold earnings either be in cash or be it in gold to the concessionaire who are mostly politicians yeah on my concession my concession is owned by an mp it's owned by an mp so in every week that's every 10 days or eight days all the good we've had we have to give him 15 percent of it afterwards we have to send something to the chief of the area and something little to the local committee too so that's how it's done now we pay the laborers or the workers there are those people who sit on the plants that's the washing plants we are giving them 220 cities every eight hours 220 cities every eight hours that's how much we pay them now the one the excavator operator is taking 700 cities per eight hours so should in case he works day and night he's taking around 1400 if the operator is very friendly you can negotiate with him and then the day the eight hours for the day you are paying him 700 and then with the night eight hours you pay him around 600 or 500 if only he's friendly you can negotiate with him that way and he will understand so you can just imagine the number of people galamsey is feeding in this country now why does the government intend to stop galamsey have you created jobs for these people where would they get the source of livelihood from even on my site i'm employing around 40 people and they are all from the local community the local indigents or those in the village these are the people i've employed now you go to some uh, news channels or some tv stations you will see uh, soldiers invading sites burning excavators these are all for the cameras because if the police or the soldier comes to the site they just come to visit us and then even if he knows that this concession belongs to this member of parliament or this concession belongs to this politician even the soldier won't even bother to come and burn any excavator or come and sack people from there he's just there to take his shop money it's negotiable the police come to site every day on my site every day we have about three police team who comes there and then each is taking 300 cities sometimes 250 sometimes 300 so you can just imagine they are our friends you can never stop galamse in ghana the job is ongoing but the truth is that the methods used in mining that's what should be evaluated and then there should be more teachings more teachings should go on that's with the miners on how to mine in order not to cause any danger to the society or not to cause any uh, harm to livelihood that's what's supposed to be done i think that can help rather than putting a stop to it 
and also after the digging of the trenches and the digging of the manholes or digging of the land after we do what we call reclamation as we cover the lands and then use it for a different purpose i for one have been in the mining business for nine years now as i started it this business immediately i completed the university and i was job hunting for some time and then a friend introduced me into this mining thing uh, he had a concession somewhere in the eastern region so as things were slow i wasn't getting job i was job hunting for over two years now he invited me to just come and be a, a secretary for him so during this period I also had the interest and I had a little experience in the mine and the little money I accumulated, I had to get the land on my own and also start with something small. And you can bear witness, it's, it hasn't been bad, although there are ups and downs, but it's, it's, it's better, it's better. Through this mining thing, I think I, I can also classify myself as, if not well to do, I'm average, it's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And then about uh, why mining is done at night. It's not that mining is done at night. We use hours for our daily works. We start work. Sometimes you can start work at 7 o'clock and then you close around 4 or 5. That's the normal time the machine works. 8 hours a day and then 8 hours a night. The machine works 8 hours for the day and then for the night it works 8 hours also. So let's say you start work at 7 a.m. in the morning. By 4 p.m., your eight hours is due. Now the machine has to pack. If you want to next still work, if you want the machine to work for you, you just have to negotiate with the caretaker of the machine or the operator. So that he will work maybe from four, five, six, that's two or three hours extra. And they charge 600 CDs per every hour. That's extra hours. After their main eight hours of time they've worked, if you want the excavator to work an extra hour for you, you pay 600 CDs per hour. So in case you are working for three hours, you are paying them 1,800. That's how it is. Maybe you were not able to complete your work. Now you have to go into the night. Then you have to start working at the night around maybe 8 p.m. So the next morning, that's how it's also done. So it's not that mining is done in the nights only. No, no, no. It's a day and night affair. There are people who come to work day during the day. There are others who come work to work during the night. We have day shift and the night shift. And there are also people who are also willing to work for day and night. Some people can come into can come to the site. They sleep at the site. They do everything at the site. For the whole week, they are working day and night, day and night. For every eight hours, you are being paid. Uh, if you are going to sit on the washing plants and do the washing, you are paid 220 Ghana cities every eight hours so imagine a typical village boy or a typical laborer who comes to the side to work finding it difficult to find work outside and comes to the side to work he's he's gaining 220 ghana cities every eight hours if he's capable of working he's strong enough to work for say uh, 40 hours you can check eight forty divided by eight hours you get five what five that's he, he's working five times now multiply two 120 cities by five. It's around 1,100 Ghana cities, just for 40 hours. So you see how lucrative the work is. The work is very lucrative. But if you say you are putting a stop to mining or galamsey, what are you trying to say? You rather have to put in place uh, precautionary measures, or you have to set a, maybe a committee who will go to the site to guide the miners. So that they use the proper methods to mine rather than putting a stop to the whole thing you are just creating hunger and anger to the youth you are not creating jobs for the youth now people have created a job the youth are fighting for themselves they are the side working and then you want to stop it outright it's not done that way and even with the stopping thing you know as i've said initially it's not as easy as we see it what we see on the screens is different from what goes on on the site those who are telling you people we are stopping galams they are involved they are involved and they know that they are gaining maximum money from that side that sector so why should they put a stop to it they won't stop they won't stop but due to greed greed due to greed 
they are not ready to put precautionary measures and methods to make the mining safe. Look at our cocoa farmers. Have you asked yourself why a cocoa farmer will sell his cocoa farm for a miner or for, a, for people to use as calamity? The government have neglected the poor cocoa farmer. He will struggle and struggle and struggle and at the end of the year he's going to get about two bags of cocoa, three bags of cocoa, four bags, five bags. And then the government, he will bring the cocoa to the cocoa buyer. And the cocoa buyer will ev won't even give him a good price. For the whole year, the cocoa farmer, who is the average cocoa farmer, is getting about five, ten bags of cocoa. And then he is getting around, mm -hmm. see, 25,000 to 30,000. Even now that they say cocoa is too high, for 30,000. Now I'm buying part of his farm, not even all. A part of his cocoa farm for, say, 150,000 Ghana cities, 1.5 billion cash. The cocoa farmer will just give it out and then <laughs> he will give it out and they use the money for something else. So you see, and with this land, this cocoa land I'm buying for 150,000 Ghana CD. I'm using the land for just for two, three weeks and I'm done with the land. I leave it back to him, whatever he wants to come and do with the land. He can come and use it for what he wants to use it for. You see, after doing, after uh, extracting my gold from the land, I just reclaim the land for him. I just use the bulldozer to just I mean, cover the pits, and I leave it for him. Now, in about two years, the land becomes uh, rich again for shallow rooted crops like maize. They can use it again. So the cocoa farmer will definitely sell his cocoa farm to me at that price. You see, so the government has a whole lot of has a lot of work to do. He has a lot of work to do. You have to just give the cocoa farmer incentives. If you are giving them right incentives. You have given them good prices for the cocoa. They won't sell it for galamsey. They won't sell it for minus. Do you understand me now? Now there is something we should ask ourselves. After the mining is done in the bush, and then uh, we get the gold. Where do the gold go to? Who buys the gold from the miners? We've never asked ourselves these questions. There are buyers in our regions, and maybe our towns, who buys the gold at the, uh, maybe at the town where the mining is going on. Imagine one pound of gold being sold at 10,200, even at my end. And imagine taking this gold to Accra and then further on, sending it overseas or abroad. You can just imagine and consider the amount of money you are going to get. So if you see one should quit this industry, it will be hard. Just a pound of gold is sold at 10,200 in my area. And let's say in every eight hours, I'm able to get around 10 pounds or even 12 pounds. You can calculate by the end of the week how many pounds of gold I'll be getting. So it's a very lucrative industry. It's a very lucrative venture. Then within this eight hours I'm talking about, you are going to use diesel with my machine. I'm using diesel 12 gallons for eight hours. 12 gallons of diesel for eight hours which a gallon costs 500 cities. 500 cities times 12, I'm spending 6,000 Ghana cities, plus petrol, two gallons of petrol, also costing 6,000, so 7,000. So you just subtract this cost from the money I'm getting. Let's take a pre uh, pre-test shop money, 700 Ghana city for the eight hours. And then, uh, then again, the workers who sit on the terminal, let's consider all as see 12,000 costs within the eight hours. 12,000 is what I spent. And then I'm getting around 10 pounds. You can just imagine. Check the difference. And have you asked yourself when they buy it, what did they do to the good? They refine it and then they will come and sell it to the government again. You sell it to the Ghana government. There are individuals who have licenses who are also be, who are able to also take the gold abroad to go and sell overseas. But even those people, before you get the licenses, unless you have the political power, the licenses are still given along party lines. So it still bows down to the government. And he, the government needs the gold in abundance. So he wouldn't come to the bush to stop you from mining. So what we are hearing on the airways and we are seeing on TV, it's just, sometimes I see it as a propaganda. If, if NDC comes to power, MPP will also use it as a propaganda against them. But I don't think it's the right thing. What we all have to do is that we, should be, we shouldn't deceive ourselves, but we should rather go to the sites, we form a committee, we, we, we make what? We try to teach 
the miners, the best ways of mining, so that at the end of the day, it doesn't cause any danger or harm to human life. Yeah, I think that's what should be, that's what should be done, rather than throwing that in the eyes of the public, and then you see people making a, a people protesting against Galamse in Accra. Why don't you come to the side to protest? What you are seeing on TV is just camouflage. It's just camouflage. The government is aware of what we are doing. The chiefs are aware. They take their part and their percentage of it. There are other unscrupulous people who also uh, find various means to enter into the bush that the forest reserves to mine. Those people, I think they should, their operations should come to a halt. For them, it's an illegal way of entering. But aside that, other little mining, community mining, and all those mining, mining we are doing, the government is aware. The chiefs are aware. The local community is aware. So my advice to my fellow miners is that we should try our best not to uh, endanger human life with the way we are doing our mining. We should look for good ways of doing the mining so that at least we won't endanger human life. Yeah, that's the best thing I think I can see. But to put a stop to Galam oh, it doesn't work like that. It won't work. Because have you considered the more people we are employing? Even do you think even the uh, villages or maybe the community in which we are mining, do you think they will even agree? Do you know the kind of employment our mining activities have created for the indigenous? The women come to the sites to sell. People are if you go to any mining site, goods are very expensive. And then we miners, we don't care, we'll buy even we'll buy at any price you give to us. So they are even happy when there is mining going on. If you come to my community where I'm mining like this. If you break mining for about a month, the indigenous don't like it at all. They really wish we keep mining the whole year, but we never stop. So to put a stop at or stop to stop mining like that, it don't work. It don't work. Now, the government should be truthful to his, himself, and then he should tell the public what's really going on. And I think a committee to, should be set to look into the mining activities. Uh, I think environmental protection agencies should also work well. Uh, they should do their work well. And they know how to educate the miners to mine very well so that they don't cause harm or danger to human life. That's the little I can see. Uh, this is the final stage. So this is where the mercury is put into that box over there. Uh, the mercury is poured into that box so that it entangles the gold particles together. It entangles all the gold particles together, the gold dust together. So this is where the mercury is used. So this is where the mercury in turn goes back into the water bodies and then pollutes it. About the mercury, I think we can devise a method in which we are not going to use the mercury in the water bodies. That the mercury shouldn't go back into the water bodies to cause harm to human life. I think there should be a method in which we are not going to use the mercury in the rivers. That would be very good. Then about leaving the mining for, for another fault. Uh, I don't think I will leave the mining fault now. But I have other businesses as well. I have other businesses running for me as well. But mining is very lucrative. If done well, it's very lucrative. Even though you need more money to invest. It's still a lucrative venture to enter. So I think leaving mining now, it's a no for me. And even if it's not the mining I'm doing, I'll be doing the buying of gold. Yes, it's a very lucrative venture. Thank you. Like my boss said, yes, Galamse is causing a lot of threats and problems to our water bodies. Galamse can never be stopped. The only thing that the government can do about it is put in place measures, regulations that can enable them operate in the right way of doing things. So that this threat that is that Galamse is causing to our water bodies, our environment, the lands and everything, the fishes are even dying due to the mercury that they use, the pollution and all that. For all these things to be stopped, the government needs to put in place measures. And the problem goes deeper than just the ordinary people because the big forces are also behind 
behind it. But if the government puts in place measures to regulate their operations, then things, the dangers and the threats can be minimized. Because gold, like I said, government needs the gold as well. God bless you. There are a lot of videos on the channel, a lot of life encounters that people have shared. Please enjoy any of the encounters and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's grow this community so that we can bring you a lot, a lot of encounters around the world.